Hello, I'm Yan Wong. I'm an evolutionary biologist. Um, I also do things on the television, on the radio, to do with science in general. Uh, and I'm going to answer some of your questions. Lewis, age 14, wants to know why Mother Nature seems so cruel. <laughs> I think that's just a human perception. I don't think Mother Nature really, really is cruel. It's just that we often see one organism taking advantage of another. And maybe that's just because it's one of the easiest ways to make a living. It's, it's pretty easy being a parasite on something else. Um, you get everything sort of given to you on a plate, if you like. Um, and you might think that's r rather mean, and you might think, oh, these, these really nasty wasps, for example, that lay their eggs in caterpillars um, and eat them from the inside out. But we do the same thing. We eat all these plants around us, um, and we're taking advantage of all the hard work that those plants have done um, to capture energy from the sun and take water from the soil and all that sort of stuff. And we're completely exploiting it just for our own, our own means. It just shows that that's one of the easiest ways to make a living is just to take advantage of what other, other organisms are doing. And in a way, Mother Nature isn't cruel about it. It's just, it's just indifferent. That's how it works. That's the best way to do it. And so that's how uh, organisms make a living. Jessica, who's age 13, wants to know what was the first animal on Earth and who was the first human on Earth as well? Now, both of those questions turn into really a matter of definition. What do you mean by animal? What do you mean by human? One way of defining an animal is to look at all the animals that exist today and say all their ancestors, the most recent common ancestors of all those, they're all animals too. And then we can use what current animals look like to go backwards in time to try and guess what their most recent common ancestor looked like. And in fact, I did this about 10 years ago. I tried to draw a picture of what I thought uh, the most recent common ancestor of all existing animals uh, looked like. And I tell you, it doesn't really look like what you might think an animal is at all. And this big organism um, has sex, uh, it uh, goes around collecting food, uh, it, it's motile, it moves. Um, and it senses the environment just like um, animals do today. And so that's my best guess as to what the first animal looked like a long time ago, uh, hundreds of millions of years ago, maybe 800 million years ago, something like that. For the first human, that's a little bit more difficult actually because what do you mean by human? The point is that evolution is a very gradual process. And so at some point in the past, a sort of ape-like thing would have given birth to something that looked a little bit more like a human. That would have given birth to something that looked a little bit more like a human again. And at what point do you draw the line and say, this one's a human, that one's not? Well, you would probably draw the line somewhere differently to where I would draw the line. And so you can't point to any one place where suddenly humans came into existence. It's a very gradual process. Jane wants to know what's the most likely end to the human race, <laughs> which is quite an interesting question. And people do try and study that. I think, um, fortunately, it's quite hard to kill like everyone. <laughs> we might, I, I think it's quite likely that large numbers of us, us will get wiped out by disease, for example, or by, I guess, accidental, you could think of nuclear war and stuff like that. But I don't think that's likely to kill absolutely everyone. And to, for the end of the human race, you really need to get rid of everyone on Earth. And that's quite difficult. And so I think humans are widespread species. We're all over the world. We can survive all sorts of different environments. Even if there's major climate change, some of us will probably survive. Um, I, I feel pretty positive generally that mm, eventually humans will survive and probably evolve into something that looks slightly different, like, like everything has done in the past. Sophie, who's age 16 and from North Wales, wants, wants to know what I think will be the next big advance in science and engineering. That's quite difficult to say because predicting the future is always difficult. And I'm not sure that there will be sort of massive big advances at a single stroke. I think there's gradual development. Understanding of the brain, for example, will be extremely important. Understanding uh, how genetics and genomics works, how to construct organisms from scratch, I think that will be quite important. Um, things like nuclear fusion, again, very important. I don't think these things are going to suddenly appear. I think it's going to be a gradual process um, whereby someone finds out something, someone finds out something more, and suddenly we will gain the ability to be able to, to design our own biology, for instance, I think that's, or, or to understand what's going on in our heads, in our heads, which we don't really understand at the moment. I think those are going to be very big advances. 
Well, thank you very much for those questions. There's some really interesting ideas in there. And if any of them have inspired you, then maybe you'd like to submit one of them as a project to the National Science and Engineering Competition.